Okay, my friends, this was sent to me by Marilyn B. She's a, a friend that sends me little tips here and there. Now, this is from Quantum Magazine and how cells use bioelectricity to coordinate and make group decisions. They're destroying cells. And you can actually see the destruction happen in real time. I'm going to show you they have it recorded. And it takes electricity. And the electricity, I'm going to tell you right now, is generated by these enzymes. And it, it's, it's instantaneous. It's not like it's taking a little while, a little longer, and it's done. That's how an enzyme works. Enzymes are created by bacteria. If you don't have the bacteria, you may take longer for that to work, or it might not work at all. Let's take a look at what these things do to expel unhealthy cells. This is just electricity, all generated by enzymes. All right, let's just watch this. Boom, done instantly, and it, it, the cell dies. Its cellular membranes are destroyed. How that was targeted, why it was decided that that one should go, I don't know. But that's, that's electricity. And when you see something glow like that, that's energetic. It's, it's, and I believe this is all due to enzymes working with half-life chemistry. And um, attacking the membrane and killing it. It says the cell shrinks due to the change in its bioelectric properties before it's extruded from the tissue. A lightning flash represents a change in light reflection as the membrane is depolarized and water exits the cell. It's killing the cell by an electric discharge and I Virtually all things that happen that quickly happen due to electric movement of particles. Whether it's lightning or static or electricity, it's an instant flush of these little white particles. Look, I'm an instant flush. And that's, that's an electric discharge to that. Now, something in here is what they call a trigger. And a trigger sets off these ribosomes and they flush from that trigger. So there's some trigger, what it is, I don't know. All right, I'm just gonna run through some clips that I took and I think it might be this spot right here, this a loose junction. Cells are supposed to have tight junctions. Now, I'm just going to show you what I did for clips off of here. This is when it just explodes with electricity. There's no rhyme or reason to the when I took these. But this is as this thing is collapsing and being destroyed. And you see, everybody's got a tight junction, basically. And that had a look to me like a loose junction. Now this is just before it be, is completely toast. This just shows it when it's. I think this is the problem right here. Could be. They don't know what targets it, and that's just a guess, you know. And here's where it's starting to. Uh, get glowy all around it. And I, I think it has loose junctions. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But they, they, everybody else is too, so. And this is when it's getting destroyed. And these, these, I find these interesting. What they are doing there. And why so much energy here. Anytime you see something bright, it's energy, it's electricity, basically. But you can see everybody has fairly consistent borders around it. And this one did not. It had that pinch point there. Let's see what we got here. That's nothing. Look at 
Look at that. Now that's when it's really getting. Look at that. What that's all about, I don't know. But it's definitely setting up some kind of a, a border around here to say, all right, chop that thing out of here. And I think this might be the, the point that it was decided that it's, the cell's not going to hold up. It's, it's dying or whatever. And they want to get rid of it. Maybe. <laughs> all I can say is maybe. And here it is again being attacked just at the moment of its being totally consumed by its whatever is consuming it. I don't know. There's a lot of chemistry going on here instantaneously. And w when you read how much an enzyme can do to increase the energy, it's just staggering. I see here is this. It's the only thing I can see. I don't know. And these guys came running in as conductors or something. And after that, it went poof. And that was the end of that guy. So, very interesting. At that point, it's total. Now, what happens then? Somebody's going to have to clean that mess up. Because it just collapses. And I, I would think that's debris. These are my, maybe the guys waiting to eat up the debris. You know, that could be. That could well be. <laughs> All right, watch it when it collapses. Watch this bump. You see that bump? Bumps right into these guys here. Is that involved? I don't know. Is there some attraction? Obviously. Some bump bumped it over there. I, I don't see it anywhere else. Well, maybe a little bit. I don't know. It's hard to say. Okay, this is kind of a great article. And this is Elias Barriaga. And he's shown that frog embryos generate electrical fields to guide cell migration. All right, so the cells have to get these fields to drive them one way or another to get to where they're supposed to go, apparently, cell migration. The study of bioelectricity, formerly stranded in biology's backwaters, is coming back like crazy, he said. Now, what's bioelectricity? Well, I showed you their, their energy, you know, uh, well, I guess I didn't show you about the frog legs and so forth, but you can, you can inject energy, uh, electricity, into frog legs and they'll they'll twitch and so forth because the the um, nerves are driven by electrical changes and what makes the electrical change there's something in your body and especially in the heart there's a heart rhythm section in the cell somewhere that tells them I'm supposed to go off every such and such and so and, um, and then it probably changes based upon the oxygen level, meaning how much you're working. Your heart starts to pump harder. It's, it's very, very entangled. But anyway, this guy, uh, Gal Galvani, all right, proven, was proven wrong in the details. He wasn't totally off. Virtually every cell on every branch of the tree of life expends a hefty chunk of its energy budget, in some cells more than half, on maintaining a voltage across its membrane. Well, that's a minor detail. You're going to have a voltage across that membrane. You're going to have, it's a uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, I think they call it, where it's, it's a polarity, basically. Now, the voltage, I don't know, the vo that I don't care about. I care about understanding the membrane, how important is that membrane around that cell, and it is important, very important. All right, um, but he's talking about the voltage difference that results called the membrane potential, stores potential energy that can be released later. 
well, it's storing ribosomes because the ribosomes are the things that do the energy. They're the, they're the catalysts. And a catalyst is what you need to pro pro provide you with the energy. But you have to have the product there for the catalyst to work on. And a catalyst works instantaneously. And when I say instantaneously, I mean instantaneously. You know, I gotta be honest with you, I have no idea about this voltage difference across membranes, but there is gonna be hydrophilic and hydrophobic. One repulses water, one attracts water. And I do know this, there's gonna be a fluid-filled highway there that is gonna have a ton of energy, potential energy in it, because it's gonna have the enzymes. And the enzymes are the products that react instantaneously to give you energy instantly. And it can be released later. They're saying, oh, it's, it's storing something in the membrane. It can be released later. Well, it, it's, it's, well, you know what? Let me just show you what exactly it is. Because they're saying it's like pressure behind a dam. Gravity tugs water downhill. The dam stores the energy holding the water at the top of the hill. And then, like, electrochemical force tugs the charges downhill. It's a, it's a whole chart, yeah, pluses and minuses, agreed, 100%. But it's from being releasing the ribosome enzymes. The ribosomes are just floating around waiting to be triggered. And they get triggered from whatever the core causes, whether it's flight and fright and being getting burnt and being stabbed or whatever. So whatever it is that your body has to respond to, happens basically within this layer. This the fluid-filled highway touches everything in your body and responds instantly in a coordinated manner to protect you, to do whatever. But it has to have the chemistry. In order to have the chemistry, you have to have the enzymes. They're the catalyst. In order to have the enzymes, which are the catalyst, you have to have the bacteria. If the bacteria is damaged or dead, you cannot create the enzymes you need to do all of these special things to move this, this flow of energy around your body. All right, this is so cool. This is an attack on this cell. It's, gonna, it's, just, it's targeted for destruction and it's being elect, basically electrocuted. Watch, in a flash, boom. Now watch it collapse. Now, What's in the center? I had to take a million shots of this, but I got a couple of shots that show what's in the center versus what's in the center of an actual cell. All right, inside of a regular cell, you've got the nucleolus, this area here. Then you've got a bunch of different organelles, they call them, they're little bits and pieces that do things inside the cell to make the cell function. And inside of that, you've got ribosomes, which are the actual enzymes. Those are the enzymes, do all the work. And you can have millions in here if you have enough good bacteria in you to create them, because the bacteria is what creates them. So there uh, can be millions in here, and they react to something that's trying to damage you. Well, look at this now, don't forget what you're seeing here. And these things hanging off the side, Look at this. <laughs> that looks pretty similar. This looks like the uh, uh, the reticulum. I can't forget what it's called. But that's the nucleolus. And there's a whole bunch of organelles that are inside the cell. And it's collapsing. It's killing it. I, I think it was because it had a loose junction. But I don't know. I, I have no idea really, to be perfectly honest with you. I'm just, that's just a wild guess. But if there is something that targets it, because that looks like a loose junction to me, because it actually blew right out through here, if you watch it really carefully. And uh, they're supposed to be nice and rounded and completely surrounded. And loose junctions are, are, um, are a death sentence for cells. It's like you have this, like, breaking a piece off of here and squirts in and out or whatever happens. 
And I think these guys might be the cleanup crew. <laughs> Just waiting. They're doing something over here. And uh, anyway, very interesting stuff. Okay, my friends, this is possibly the problem with this cell, which is about to become eliminated. And this could possibly be the source of the electricity that is going to surround this thing and destroy it. And I see they have some very good shots of this. All right, so let's sort of figure this out start to end. Something's going wrong in here. Whether this is little wormy looking things causing trouble, I don't know. There's loose junction, I don't know. But something triggers it. Watch over here. Boom, you see that? It went all the way out to here. Went right through that whole junction. Now, is that what caused it? I don't know. But when it does, it surrounds it with energy and instantaneously collapses the whole thing. I mean, just like that. And that's what an enzyme does. And if there was another one that had a trouble like that, it would move over to the next one and bang it. An enzyme could be that little squiggly thing that we're seeing there. You see this? That could be the actual enzyme. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because that's what an enzyme would look like, something similar to that. 